Now lifting off technique is something I use quite a lot, especially if I'm doing woodwork, that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you the basics on how I do this. It's only a very short video, but there's different ways you can do this, okay? There's three different techniques I tend to use, some more than others. The first one really is when I wet the paper and I can lift off some details straight from the paper. So let's just find something we can use. Let's try that one there, shall we? So I'm going to go for my double zero brush, okay? And a bit of tissue. I'm going to wet the brush, simple as this. Then the idea is, when you're on the paper, so I'm just bringing that up so you can just see that a minute, I'm nearly off camera shot there, sorry about that. Now if you fancy learning how to paint wildlife in watercolour, come and join me and my members on patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. Click on become a member, choose one of the tier levels as you can see here. Now there's also my companion page which will enable you to find your way around Patreon much easier. And within the video page itself, these are all the current video projects each lasting between three and five hours long, which you'll get for just $10 per month. Bearing in mind, I add a new one to this every single month as well. And also add special videos just for my patrons. Okay, back to the video. Is that you can very lightly go over the same place time and time again with your brush. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's like a breathalyzer test. So I've been told, of course, I wouldn't know those things. And then you would lift off the paint to create a nice little highlight using the very tip, the very tip of your brush. So just do that one more time. You find also it depends on the paint as well. Some paint tends to stain more than others and a bit tricky and harder to move. So keep going, keep going, keep going, and then lift. So there's two little highlights there just by using this little kind of double zero brush to create those effects. Now I use that if I'm using it for something like whiskers, that kind of thing to get the, uh, the very fine details within a cat's face or within a dog, or as I mentioned, doing woodwork or blades of grass, anything like that. So it comes in really useful. And you can also tone it back down again with a little bit of color over the top. So that's easy enough. So that's using your double zero brush or whatever size brush you want. Obviously, if you go for a larger brush, let's say, let's say a size five, which is like the dampened. Now, Depends on the tip as well. If you've got a good tip on your brush, you can still create like a very fine line, but this isn't quite as fine, and I don't know if it's going to come off quite as easy. And the reason behind that is a different bristle. This is a sable brush, and because it's sable, it's softer compared to this one, which is my favorite double zero, which is synthetic. So therefore, it's a little bit stiffer and gives me a bit more control, obviously, whilst I'm using it, which is why I like using that one. So if you want a softer lifting off effect, you can use, let's move that out of the way, a sable brush, probably a larger one, to create a little bit of a soft kind of highlight. You can also do this method as well, especially using your double zero brush, if you're using it for highlights for an eye. So if you don't want to use watercolor white, and you want to pull some of that paint off, you can do it that way around. Another method as well, is by using a bristle brush. Now, this is an old, I think it's talon, I think it's called, or something like that, talcum. Not talcum powder, no, talcum, something like that. And all they're basically done with this, I've got a pair of pliers and crimped it to flatten it out to make it more of a chisel brush, because it wasn't originally. And this is one of the very cheap brushes you can buy from a discount shop. Um, you usually get a pack of probably five or six of these, so a very low cost, a very, very low cost. But they come in handy, so if you see these kind of things in the shop, get them, just get yourself a packet, because they really come in very useful. Now, because it's a bristle brush, which is made more for acrylic painting, oil painting, that kind of thing, you'll find that the bristles are much harder. So, I'll show you what I mean. So I've got this full of water, and I'm gonna go, 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 and then lift. You can wipe off as well if you want to. Look at that. Now, look how much brighter that is compared to the smaller, fine bristle brushes that we've got. So again, I'll do another one. There's enough water on the brush, get some more water pull. That's better. And you keep going, 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 going. And then you've got a nice highlight. So if you want to take off quite a reasonable amount of paint, you can use a bristle brush for that. However, you've got to bear in mind that the more paint you take off, the more damage you'll do to the paper underneath. So it all depends on where you're taking the paint off. If it's in an area where you want to make sure that nothing looks a bit odd, where you can't really cover it up again, be careful doing that. But if it's in an area, say for example, if you're painting, uh, I don't know, like a barn owl, for example, I'm painting one of them at the moment, 
and you, you're going to be covering up a, a lot of the de a lot of these areas within lots of detail within the within the feathers. That's not a problem at all because you're going to be covering up any little marks, only rough paper texture with the details. Nobody will ever know. So that's fine. So bear in mind that when you're using that, you've got to think about where you're going to be using it. Okay, so that's that one. One last thing I want to show you is going to be a bit of sponge. Really? Honest. Honest. Trust me. Now, <laughs> this is something I found on the internet. And it's called, you ready? It's called Dr. Power Magic Eraser. Okay, now this comes in a large, large, large box and it's used for cleaning sinks and pans and cookers and all sorts of stuff. An idea, and the thing is, because it's a really big long block and I think it cost me, I don't know what it was now, about three pounds or something like that. Very, very cheap indeed. It really was very cheap. I've cut a small piece off and that's it. All right, just a small piece. Let's just get another, something else we can use for erasing. Now I'm going to wet this, get ready for this, and squeeze it out. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to start erasing. Look at that straight away. Oh, that's amazing stuff, it really is. So, magic eraser. It's something worth bearing in mind. You can take paint off a lot, you wash it out, you can reuse it. All right, so I'm going to wash that back, I'm going to wash it out, just rinse it out a little bit, just for now. I'm not going to take it all out. And then you can do some more. Or, if you want to, you could really go for it and take the paint off. I know, quite messy. But you can bear that in mind, you can do this. You can really smudge it all around and change the hue of it, change the flavour, let it dry, then go over the top again with another layer of paint. So you can do all sorts, you really can. And you can go back over it again, take some more paint off that way, back over it again, take some more paint off that way. So magic erasers, that's one way you can use this as well. But again, like the bristle brush, this will damage the paper. So bear that in mind. Um, I say it's good stuff, I'll wash it out in a minute so it's nice and clean again. So we've got to remember with this though, is that yes, it will take the paint off, it does a really good job of that, but it will damage the paper, okay? So use it carefully, think about where you're going to use it, and it's an area that you can cover up once it's nice and dry again by putting detail over the top, not a problem at all. But if it's an area which is going to be out and quite clear like a, like a, a plain background, be very, very careful. But there you go. That's three different methods you can use for taking paint off the paper by using the lifting off technique. And I mentioned, so you've got the detail brush, you've got the bristle hair brush, and you've got a magic eraser. And I know there's other methods out there as well. If you've got any comments, please post them down below and what methods that you use when you're removing paint from the paper. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. So until next time around, keep them brushes wet and bye-bye uh, for now.